We're here at PCA 2024 with one of my favorite brands in the entire industry, James Brown of Oveja Negra Black Label Trading, Blackwork Studio. James, thanks for taking the time. Definitely, man. Good to be here. It's a new show. I know that you guys had a huge year coming off of your 10th anniversary. Right. And yeah, so yeah. How, how has that kind of been, that transition from 10 years to where you guys are now? Obviously, we had to follow that up with something really cool. So, you know, coming into PCA this year, we uh, traditionally normally only have one PCA exclusive release. And yeah. so this year we have two. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to do something for Blackworks and something for Black Label as well. So um, yeah. we're super excited about that. You know, this is, this is also going to be kind of a big year for us. You know, it's a 10 year anniversary for Morphine, uh, which is one of our limited okay. releases. It's been around since the beginning. So we're yes. going to do some cool stuff with that. And yeah, we've got a, got a few other things coming out as well. And some I've always enjoyed with the brand, whether it's uh, Black Label or Blackworks, is there's always like a different spin on it, different twist. So yeah. like. Paper Crane is your Q1 release, right? Um, but it's not your ordinary Connecticut. I've always been very cautious anytime we've done Connecticut's in the past. You know, we've done the, the Killer Bee Connecticut, the Porcelain. Um, I always want to make sure that the Connecticut's we do are, are, are very different, very unique. Yeah. Uh, Connecticut's yeah. For, are made for people that already smoke our brands. And I think the Paper Crane is definitely a, a Connecticut for people that smoke Blackwork Studios. So. Right. Um, it has a really great spice component to it that, right. that pairs with this kind of almost uh, soft, fruity, floral note. Um, so it's a very complex cigar, lots of layers going on there. Um, and then the wrapper especially is going to be the most unique part of it, so yeah, the yeah. Connecticut Desflorado wrapper. Desflorado is something that I was new to, uh -huh. so what exactly is that process? So kind of the short version is, you know, Anytime you have a tobacco plant and you're going to be harvesting, you're going to be priming the different sections of the plant, right? right so you right. got the seco, the viso, the lajero. And so what they do is they, they take the seco, the viso off of the plant. Um, and, you know, normally with tobacco, you don't want to let the plant flower, right? Okay. So yeah. these plants are allowed to grow to the point right when they start to flower, right when they start to bud. Um, and they actually crop the entire top off okay. of the plant. And so what that does is it puts the plant under a tremendous amount of stress. Um, and puts everything that it has in that kind of upper crown section of leaves. Right. And that's what's going to be harvested to create the Desflorado. Gotcha. And what happens is, is you know, a traditional Connecticut's going to be a very thin leaf. Um, doesn't have a lot of oil content, doesn't mm. have a lot of uh, uh, nicotine, um, spice component, things like that. Uh, whereas the Desflorado is going to be a much thicker, heavier leaf, a lot yeah. uh, more oil content to it a little bit higher in strength um, and it has a very unique flavor profile and one of the really unique qualities of the tobacco is it has this kind of beautiful golden almost pink hue to it right, right. Um, so yeah it's a it's a very beautiful wrapper but i think that it smokes completely different than any other connecticut yeah, yeah. no for sure i mean even within your own portfolio i mean i know that porcelain kind of started as an le Right. And then it got so much popular. Same with the Killer Bee Connecticut, I believe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And but even the differences between that and this this Death Lotto, it has it has that extra spice component, that extra body component. It does for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's definitely you know I would say medium strength, very full flavor cigar. Okay. Um, and what I love about it is that balance that it has between. Yeah you know, the, the floral notes and the, the nice spice component that's there. Yeah. Now, in the Black like Works portfolio, very pointed particular names, and that yeah. I think speaks to the artistry that you put in it, not only tobacco, but also on the like presentation. Right. Paper Crane, where does that come from? It was a, a cigar idea that I had, um, and I knew that I wanted to do something with this wrapper for a long time. But it kind of comes from the idea of having that sort of, uh, you know, de delicate design aesthetic to it. Um, but it's also very complicated, you know. Okay. So something like the paper crane, which is made out of something very delicate, you know, like a rice paper. Mm -hmm. But it's also very complicated in the way that it's done yeah. um, to yeah. create the final That's awesome. image. And yeah. so that was kind of yeah. the idea behind it, you know. Okay. Um, and so to add that kind of little extra touch to it i wanted to do you know the box press mm -hmm. which kind of gives that folded look yeah. to yeah, it yeah, so yeah. yeah that was kind of the whole idea behind it okay this year that's not your only limited there's something else coming that i've, I've kind of read some of the press release kind of got an idea of returning more to the roots of black label 
Yeah, the orthodox. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of over the last 10 years, you know, Black Label started very much as being a very big, bold profile brand, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's what we were good at. That's what we started with. And that's what I loved about Nicaraguan tobacco. Um, but, you know, over the last 10 years, we've kind of veered in several directions. Things like you mentioned the porcelain, yeah. Santa Muerte, um, you know, even the Madonna. It's mm -hmm. definitely kind of more in that kind of medium profile. Yeah. It's not necessarily that in-your-face boldness. Right, right. Um, so, you know, coming out of our 10-year and going into this year, I wanted to do something that kind of, you know, took us back to the beginning a little bit and focused on, you know, what we what we became popular for right. um, is that big, bold profile. And I think the Orthodox definitely delivers on that. So nice. it's. Uh, uh, it's probably our highest nicotine content cigar that okay. we've ever done, okay. um, but definitely very intense, very bold, but very flavor forward. Um, I really love the spice component to that cigar, especially in the retro hail. Uh, and we're doing it in three different sizes, so you kind of get to experience it in a few different ways. Um, yeah. I think each individual size is very unique in okay. and of itself. Um, but yeah, so like you said, it's kind of going back to our roots. and putting something out that is very much how Black Label started, but still a very, very unique cigar. Nice. Kind of like you said with those sizes, like I've known in like uh, Morphine, like recent, there's some people that are like all about box press torpedo or all right. about the Corona. So it's kind of cool to experience it and find which one it is that you kind of land on. Yeah, absolutely, enjoy. absolutely. Yeah. You know, and in reality, from a cigar maker's perspective, you know, every time you do a different Vitola with a cigar, it's like a new cigar. Right, like you want there to have the similarities of the base, the core of that right, blend, right. but the proportions are all going to be different, and so you're definitely going to get you know different aspects to it. You know, one Vitola is going to be spicier or stronger than another. You know, so I think it's kind of cool to experience that same blend and you know three definitely. different versions. It's something that made me really fall in love with the brand in the beginning. So I've. Per Potentially, like most of the time, I'll smoke something on the heavier side. Yeah. And sometimes when you have that heavier side cigar, there's not really balance in it. There's just right. kind of like harshness. Hit the back of the throat and there you go. Right. So things like Last Rites or Excited for this Orthodox is that what Black Label, I think, means to me in terms of strength means also that balance component. Right. Which is really refreshing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the core of what we do. Like, it's, yeah. it's the main focus, you know. it's. It's not difficult to make a strong cigar, mm -hmm. right? It, it's not easy to make a strong cigar that's balanced, yeah. that has the yeah. flavor. You know, and with the tobaccos that we work with, with the style that I blend, it's more about, uh, you know, it's, it's flavor focused. Mm -hmm. So flavor is always king. Okay. And if strength comes as a result of that, great. Yeah. If it doesn't, fine. Okay. You know, you, you, I never make a cigar for strength's sake. Right. It's always flavor first and then okay. strength just comes uh, as you know, side effect of the tobaccos we use. So. Yeah, yeah. When I know last year with all your releases, uh, Poison Dart was a favorite of mine. Yeah. Really like that Modafina. And that was a PCA exclusive. Orthodox is in the similar realm. It's a, it's exclusive for the show, is that right? Or um, so both the cigars are being launched at PCA. So it's kind of, what okay. we do is a first come, first serve at the show. Okay. If there's product available, then we will open it up gotcha. to our other retailers, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, it's been awesome to celebrate the 10-year anniversary with you last year with the La Madonna. Looking forward to the new stuff, and uh, keep it up. It's been great stuff. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much, James. Thank you. All right. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Oakland Tobacconist.